Latin from scratch, 20th class, the apposition. Let's see what this uh, apposition is. Is a type of phrase or syntagma. In general, uh, in, in English at least, uh, we usually use this uh, word, phrase. Uh, a phrase is a word or a few words which work together. Then this syntagma is more, uh, for example, in Spanish, we tend to use this word more. Uh, as far as I know, uh, in English, this word is also used, but uh, this is more specific, more uh, linguistic uh, lingo, jargon. No? Uh, usually, you just say phrase to refer to this, no? to a word or group of words which work together. Okay, so uh, the apposition is a phrase in which a noun or noun phrase follows another element of the same kind to give details about it. Um, of course, this is kind of like this um, kind of definition, which technically might be correct, but uh, it doesn't really say anything. No? So let's um, go further and see, yeah, it, because it's not so important what it is as how it works. Okay, so let's focus on how it works. So let's uh, study the morphosyntax of the apposition. The apposition agrees, so again, this word agrees in case with the noun it refers to. So agrees in case, so case obligatory, but not necessarily in gender or number. Usually, most of the times, I would say 95% of the times, the apposition agrees in all the three um, uh, case, gender, and number, but obligatory is only the case. We are going to see, okay, with examples. The noun with an apposition may have any syntactic function, subject, direct object, indirect object, adverbial, uh, complement of the noun, whatever, okay? So we are going to have whatever the noun, subject, uh, direct object, whatever, and its apposition, okay? So we, uh, we have like, like this, no? Like subject and the apposition of the subject, etc. okay? We must not mistake it for an attribute. Remember that an attribute is like, for example, Gaius altus est. So altus is the attribute of Gaius. Or a predicative complement, which is something that we are going to study in the very next class. Some appositions are written between commas, specifically the explanatory apposition. We are going to see the difference between explanatory apposition and specifying a position, okay? So we must be careful not to confuse it for a vocative, because remember that we said that vocatives are written between commas. So also, uh, so this is what it is not, <laughs> what uh, all of these things are not an apposition, even though might be easily confused for an apposition, okay? So now let's see an example of an actual apposition. Here we have Jupiter Rex Olympi Deus Fulminis Est, which uh, we can translate as Jupiter, King of Olympus, is the god of thunder. Okay, so here we have, and here you see that we have like this thing between commas, no? Uh, which means that actually we could totally uh, remove this or write it between parentheses, whatever. And we could say Jupiter Deus Fulminis Est, Jupiter is the god of thunder, and the sentence totally makes sense. It's, uh, the sentence is complete, but it is an explanatory apposition because we give some extra information, which is not necessary, but we just give it, okay? Just because we are explaining, even if it's not necessary, okay? Because everybody knows that Jupiter is the king of Olympus, okay? So here we see the first underlined word, Jupiter, is the subject, no? because it's uh, nominative, third declension, etc. Whereas the second phrase, Rex Olympi, is a parenthetic explanation. That's parenthetic because it could be written between parentheses, which acts in a similar way to an adjective, despite Rex being a noun. Why do I say that it's, uh, it acts in a similar way to an adjective? Because Somehow, this gives extra information to uh, Jupiter, but it is not an adjective. 
it is another noun, a noun which refers to another noun, okay? Because usually we say adjectives refer to a noun. Here we have a noun which refers to another noun, giving extra information ab uh, about that noun. A noun, uh, I mean, this is why it is explanatory, because it explains, it gives an explanation in a parenthetic way, and this explanation is made without any verb. We see that there is no verb. I mean, of course, there is this verb, but this verb uh, is like mm, already part of the other part of the sentence, let's say, no? But Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Rex Olympi. So uh, there are no verbs here, okay? This is totally like on its own. Here, Rex is the apposition of the subject Jupiter. And we see that in this case, Jupiter is nominative, masculine, singular, and Rex is masculine, uh, well, we said nominative, masculine, singular, no? in the same order. Uh, nominative, masculine, singular, both of them. So in this case, and in most uh, of the cases, like 95% of the cases or even more, the apposition will agree with the noun it refers to in all three. But we are going to see that not necessarily, okay? But for now, let's uh, explain the other kind of apposition, the specifying apposition. Sometimes an apposition appears without commas, as in the following example. No? So, for example, this is like almost the beginning of the uh, Gallic Wars of Julius Caesar, no? which says, Gallos ab aquitanis garumna flumen divitit, which is uh, the river Garon separates the Gauls from the Aquitani. And here, we have like garumna and we have flumen and we have uh, both nouns and there are no commas at all. This is because it is a specifying apposition. Why is it called specifying? Because just the same way that before we said Jupiter Rex Olympi, we could mm, write it between parentheses because everybody knows who Jupiter is. We are just giving this information like extra information, but it is not actually needed. Here, imagine that we just say, like, uh, the river separates the Gauls from the Aquitani. We say, what river? There are many rivers in the, in the world, so what river exactly? Unless it was said before, and we know it mm, from the context or whatever, we couldn't know what river is, uh, it's talking about. So we need to specify. That's why specifying. So we have to specify what river? Garumna. Okay, so uh, here we have, I mean, and you see that in English, it works exactly the same, no? Uh, the river Garon, uh, I guess this is like the French uh, version, no, already, separates the Gauls from the Aquita. Okay, so there we see the difference between explanatory position and specifying a position. Then in our last example, we will see that not always is the agreement in all three cases, gender and number. Okay, because we always know, right? like case, gender, and number. And we saw that in the first example, it was super obvious, like Jupiter and uh, Rex. But here, for example, and this is a made, a made up example, like a bit forced to show this, no? Praxiteles admirabilem sculpturam apollinem sculpsit, which we can translate. Praxiteles sculpted an admirable sculpture the Apollo, no? like the Apollo is like the name of the sculpture, okay? So we see that the direct object, in this case, admirabilem sculpturam, no? this is the uh, direct object, has an apposition, apollinem, which of course agrees in case. So the case is obligatory, no? So accusative, accusative. Both of them are in the accusative case, but not in gender. Sculptura is uh, feminine, whereas Apollo is masculine, no? Feminine, masculine. So there is like a non-agreement in gender. In this case, it agrees in number because this is singular and this is singular. But we could force it even more and say, instead of uh, like imagine that the sculpture is not called the Apollo, but it's called the gods of Olympus. Then we would say admirabilem sculpturam deos, accusative plural. And this is still singular. Okay, so mm, that's pretty much what the uh, apposition is. Okay, like it's really not so it's really not so hard. Now we have to go and study the next kind of uh, phrase 
which is the predicative complement, which is mm, slightly similar to this, but works in a completely different way. 